On January 3rd, I got up in front of 400 people here in the company and told them we were going to begin addressing mental health and suicide. I told them, hey, I've been there. Uh, that safety day ended about 2.30, 3 o'clock. And by 6 o'clock that evening, I'd begin receiving emails and telephone calls from employees thanking me for saying we were going to do that. Um, I had one email from a, a superintendent at the time, or actually a project manager, and he said, I've had the guy on my crew, and I think he's been struggling for a long time, and I didn't know what I should say. I didn't know how to approach him. And our, our ride back to Tampa today, we talked about it, and he is struggling. And, hey, I've come to realize that even I'm struggling. And we both decided to go and give some help, talk to someone. Uh, that's in January. In July at our mid-year safety meeting, uh, one of the individuals came forward, and he said, what you did on January 3rd saved both my career and my marriage. Um, I've got all kinds of those stories. We, we, we created a toolbox talks, and we lost an employee to suicide in 2015. I was the last person to see him. So the, the past September, September is Suicide Awareness Month, and the first week of September is construction. Uh, we made a toolbox talk that I took out to the field. The first crew that we went to where we shared the, the talk, they wanted to open up and tell me about an alcohol intervention that they had done two weeks earlier and, and gotten one of their people in for treatment, and they were proud of it. The next crew uh, that we went and saw, one of the men on the crew wanted to tell us a story about his father that had taken his life 10 years earlier and um, how he walks every year with a picture of his father on the back of his shirt. And his mother now volunteers at a helpline. The third crew that we went to, one of the men on the crew wanted to show us his wrist where he had tried to take his life. All those stories were there prior to January 3rd of 22, but nobody ever shared those stories because of why I wouldn't share my story. So uh, on that January 3rd, uh, I tell leaders, they say, how do we begin this journey? It's about this simple, I tell them. Commit to having four toolbox talks a year. Leadership commit to standing behind it and saying we are going to support this initiative and spend $100 and buy some hard hat stickers with 988 National Help Suicide number on there. I said, so for $100, a little bit of your time and four talks a year, you can begin the process. So that was our plan. That was our goal. And that's how we began. And then uh, the past November, we sent 11 people through that wanted to get trained as mental health first aid responders. Some wanted to get trained because they felt like they had some children that were struggling at home. So they thought this would help them in their home life. Uh, some wanted to train to be resources for people here in the company. So we had 11 last November. We had 12 more than went through this March. So we're growing the pool inside of where people can go talk to someone that's a peer, someone that's on their level. Not everybody wants to come and talk to the president, right? So now they've got resources. They have other foremen. They have administrative people. So it, prior to January of 22, it was rare that we ever had anyone say, hey, do we have an an EPA, do we have, is it in our insurance plan? I was just looking about a week ago. We have someone now about every five weeks coming forward and saying, hey, I need some assistance. Where do I go? What do I do? What does it look like? So it has, we've always had a caring culture, but we're now at even a higher level.